How are you thinking about doing it? Okay? How are you thinking about doing it? How might you do it? What is your method? What have you thought about? Okay? And, and what you want is to find out the sort of the um, where, when, how of that method, right? Where they're going to do it, how they're going to do it, when they're going to do it. So you have sort of a clear picture. Okay? So I can, um, you know, so now that I've said I'm, uh, yes, I've said I'm suicidal, then it's how are you thinking about doing it? How might you do it? What method are you thinking about or whatever? Okay? And so what do you got? There's, you know, a limited number of methods, you know, pills and a knife and a gun and jumping and carbon monoxide and, you know, wrecking your car and all those kinds of things that people do. Okay? And then your job then is once you find out what the method is, help separate them from their method. Okay? If they have pills, what would you do? <coughs> yeah. Would you wrestle them to the ground and say, give me those pills? Yes. Okay. What ideally should you be doing? Secretly do. Okay. Say, can I have the pills? Okay. Years ago when I worked out at the clinic, uh, uh, one day they had moved from one building to the next, and when I got there, my supervisor came up to me and said, um, just wanted you to know I had the cover for you. And I go, what do you mean? They said, when you were, I had a little file cabinet. They said, when we were moving your file cabinet, the drawer fell open, and, and there were like 20 different bottles of pills in there. And people said, what is Dr. Bob doing with all these pills with other people's names on them? Okay? And she said, I had to explain that some of the people that you've had are suicidal, and that they had the pills with them, and you asked them to give you the pills. Okay? And you know that doesn't, of course, guarantee everything, but what it does is separate. If they have a rope, can I have the rope? If they have a car, you know, and they're going to do the car right now, can I have the keys so we can keep you safe? Or can you, can you, you know, guarantee me that you're going to keep safe until you get some help? Okay. And then, after you find out the method and help them separate it, then, as we talked about before, some resources. And your job then is to find out who else out there can help you. Don't do this alone. That person may say to you, you know, you are the only person that I trust. Okay? I can't tell anyone else. And your response to that is, I care too much for you for us to do this alone. Who else can we call? Can we call your brother? Well, I, I don't want to call my brother. I don't want to bother him or whatever. And what I do with that is I flip that over and I say, you know, if it was your brother that was hurting, would you want to know? And for most people, it's like, yes. All right, well, then we need to call your brother. Okay? And then who makes the phone call? You or them? Yeah them, right? You want them to make the phone call so that they're feeling some control and that they say, yeah, I've been feeling kind of down and I've been thinking about killing myself, okay? And then you get other people because what I'm going to tell you next is a little harsh, but if you're the only one who knows or you're the only one in the, your friend feels like you are the only one in the world that can help, them, help you, help them, and then something terrible happens tonight, that on the way home an accident occurs and you die. They got all this grief of your loss, plus one more thing. The, you with me? The one person in the world that could help them is now gone. And that's not fair to them. So don't you be the only person. Who else out there can help you? Okay. So that, you know, you got other people involved in here, and you're not just that one person doing it alone. And it kind of, you know, we kind of get sucked into that when you then have really done a lot of these listening skills, and that person, you know, feels like, wow. Someone has really heard me. They've really listened to me. Okay? And, then, and then they say to you, you know, you are so wonderful. You go, oh, no, it wasn't anything. Wait a minute. Tell me how wonderful I am again. See how it easy? How many of you are, at some point, as you're moving into your profession, want to get involved in the helping profession and helping other people? Right? So you know, your job there is not get, to, not get sucked into thinking you are the only person in the world who can help that person. All right? So suicide, a tough, tough one. Okay? Another one uh, is touch. That is, whatever relationship that you have with that person, then you touch them in whatever way. If you have a handshaking relationship, fine. If you can put your arm around them, that's fine. Um, if you hug them, you know, that's fine. Whatever it is, because touch is a very powerful mechanism. So I want you to turn to someone right now and just reach over and kind of pat them on the back. Come on, do that. Come on, find somebody. Pat them on the back. Come on, some of you aren't patting. Pat them on the back. Okay. And you felt that, right? I mean, that's, that's what touch is, okay? And touch can be a very powerful way to say, I'm here, I care for you. When my dad died and I came to school that next day and the word got out that my father had died, you know, people came up to me and said they were sorry. And I remember one person 
came up to me, who was in my building, and she came up, she didn't say anything, and she just grabbed me and she just hugged me for like five seconds. Okay? One, two, three, four, five. And she walked away. And given that was eight years ago, and I never forgot that. It's just that, you know, that's powerful stuff. Okay? So touch is important. Okay? Another one is that look for body language, right? You know, what are they saying with their body? Obviously, if it's on the phone, then you're listening more for voice, voice tone, right? You know, what's their voice tone saying? Are they nervous? Are they upset? Are they crying? You know, what's going on, okay? And those of you, you know, who have close people in your life, when they call you, you know whether they're upset in a couple words, don't you, right? You can, you can tell, you go, what's going on, right? How many of you know that, right? As soon as they're like, yeah, what's going on with you? Because that voice tone, picked, so you pick that up right away. And then with body language, you watch what they're doing, okay? And, you know, pick up information on, and sometimes what'll happen with crying is that you may be saying uh, something to someone, for example, when I know someone's suicidal and I say to them, um, so, boy, you, this has really been tough for you. Um, and I ask them the question, how long, how have you been putting up with this, all this stuff this long? And sometimes I'll, keep, I'll get people at that moment and they just start just crying because they realize I got it. I'm not trying to minimize it. I'm trying to help them understand that, you know, I'm here with you. Or other times you'll just see a little glistening in their eye. But pay attention to body language because that, that's an important one. Another one is, it looks like we're going to end up with over 20 here, is don't analyze. What's analyze mean? You know, as a psychologist, I don't analyze this. What analyze means is I know more about you than you know about yourself, okay? So you start telling me this problem and I go, oh yes, I understand that problem. Probably when you were seven or eight years old, your mother said this to you and it gets like, what, you know? So for you to kind of fall into the amateur psychologist thing and think that you can figure out this person more than they know about themselves. Instead, rather than analyzing, you say, well, why do you think things happen this way. Why do you think you're reacting that way? You got it? So you put it back on them rather than you trying to be, you know, the expert here. All right? And another one is don't, and this is a tough one, don't advise. Students come to me, you know, once in a while in my office and they say, I want to um, major in psychology and I want to be a counselor. And I go, well, that's good. Well, what brings you to that? And they say, well, because my friends tell me that I give them good advice. Okay. Well, that's not what a good counselor does. A good counselor helps that person arrive at their own thing, okay? You know, when you're giving me advice, you go, you should do this, and you should try that, and why don't you do this, and so on. Now, I'm not saying that if you know information that that person doesn't know, like the crisis clinic or, um, you know, any resources out there or whatever. Have you heard about such and such or whatever? That's very different. But if you're saying, here's what you should do, okay? And sometimes people will come to you and say, what should I do, right? I, um, I have a friend we're going to meet with them in a, a couple of weeks. My wife and I are going to get together with him and his wife. And uh, several years ago, we, we ran into them again. And, and the wife said, you know, when my husband, when we first dated, we went out on a first date, and he didn't call me for several days. And she looked at me and she said, and that was your fault. I'm going, what do you mean? She said, because you told, his name is Mike, you told Mike, Mike said to you, um, look, I, I dated this girl and I really kind of like her. And uh, what should I do? And I said to him, well, don't call her for a week, you know? And she said, and so he, he, he didn't wait a week, but he waited three days, and I said, what took you so long? And she said, I only found out years later that Bob told him not to call, okay? <laughs> I gave him this advice. Fortunately, they were married, and they're still married, but the point is, she still has this little thing about, yeah, and you told him not to call, okay? So what's going on here? We think we know what people should do with their lives. How many of you had people say to you, what should I, if you were me, what should I do? How many of you had that before, okay? And they go, well, if I were you, I'd do, and you know, I would back off from this, okay? Because your tendency is to do it, okay? Are we getting close? All right. So, and then, uh, and so instead, explore alternatives. Explore alternatives, okay? That is, and then the last one is paraphrase. That is, once in a while, say back to that person what they've said to you in summary form. So here they tell you the story that lasts for nine minutes, and they tell you how horrible this thing goes, and you say, well, wait a minute, let me make sure I got this right. Are you saying that, and then you paraphrase it in three, four, or five sentences. 
And quite often when you do that, they will say to you, yes, 